Hey everyone and welcome back to RI, our polar research station. And in today's episode, which is episode number three, we're going to take care of the dull sheep. And uh, there's a lot more explanation going on from my side um, regarding today's episode. Because first of all, before we go into the dull sheep, you can see that I'm outlining the actual polar bear habitat, how it will be in the end. Um, we are going to take care of that in the next or the uh, second next episode, we will see. Um, I want to get the arctic wolf in as well and then we are basically done. But I'm, I'm just preparing some more stuff now uh, that you get an idea of where we are going. Because um, now as the Christmas days approach tomorrow, and I'm really hoping you guys are going to have a wonderful Christmas time. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I wanted to prepare for what we do afterwards. So I, I see from the views and from the interaction that you guys are preparing to get into Christmas mood now. And that's also why I chose to have this episode about the doll sheep. You know, I'm not saying that it's boring, but it's boring. It's <laughs> <laughs> the doll sheep, I mean, I like the doll sheep as an animal. I don't want to I don't want to make it any worse than other animals, but in terms of excitement, I think from all the animals in this pack, I think the doll sheep is the one um yeah, the most doll. Uh haha, no pun intended. Uh sorry for about that. I I mean, I like this one because it's um as lovely designed um as the other ones as well, but it's a sheep at the, at the end of the day. But one thing, and I wanted to highlight this animal as much as I can still, and at the end of the day, it is a very important animal when it comes to living with and for humans, so to say. I, you know, uh, giving the milk of them and um, the wool of the sheep um, is always a big help, especially in colder areas. And I wanted to take uh, take this as an as an inspiration of, of what I will do with it. And so I thought, okay, um, it might be might be useful to have this animal here as a little bit on a, on a farm, if you will. So we are going to have this animal living in here. And I really hope that it looks good at the end and you guys agree that it does look good. I mean, um, I wanted to have this animal in because I wanted to have all the Arctic DLC animals in this zoo and plus some more uh, potentially. Um, I, you know, at the moment I'm only thinking of the uh, snow leopard, if I'm honest. Uh, I don't think about anyone else, but maybe, maybe there is another animal. I don't know. But yeah, for the moment um, I just got a lot of these animals to bring them into uh, the habitat to know where to build the uh, habitat gates and fences and you know all the, you know. All that kind of stuff. Uh, very important indeed, and yeah. So um, we are going to we are going to build a little building over here that is inspired. It's actually not really inspired by anything. It's just a very. It should be a very very generic looking um, research station habitat. And one thing I have to point out: there was someone commenting on the last episode why buildings most likely are um, elevated in in these polar areas. And I am going to read that one out now, but uh, to not annoy you as much as I did recently by searching for it. I'm going to search for that comment now and um, as soon as I have it, I'll continue my voiceover. You will just experience a very, very brief cut in my voice, um, but you don't have to wait. So let me give this a second. Alrighty, so the comment is from Laurie Fraser and Laurie Fraser said, I'm gonna read that out now. Hey Rudy, neat fact about building in the northern regions of the world. The reason you see buildings not built on the ground is due to snow and ice layers known as permafrost. The buildup of ice and snow changes with the seasonal temperatures and can affect the terrain quite substantially. If they attempt to build a foundation on these layers on permafrost, uh, of permafrost, the buildings would dramatically be affected structurally as the season change and the permafrost layers melt and freeze. Further, buildings tend to generate heat and can also affect the snow and ice layers, so the gap between the bottom of the building and the top layer of the permafrost is to allow the heat to dis uh, dissipate without further melting the layers below the building. Most buildings up north, uh, up north are built on uh, post foundations that are buried deep into the actual layers of ground below the permafrost. Um, and will not be affected by temperature changes in the uh, in the permafrost layers, therefore providing a strong foundation for the building uh, in years to come. The more you know, right? Great video, cheers from Canada. Oh man, that is such an amazing comment because that really gave me the reason um, why exactly it is. So um, it, it is it is so cool to know exactly, and it makes total sense. You know, the, the moment you think about it, it totally makes sense to me. But in general, it makes sense because honestly, what else would you believe would that be? You know, it's uh, it's pretty obvious that this might be um, a reason for the the changing layers of ice. That makes total sense to me. It also um, it's great to know that they take care of the heat. You know, that they don't want to melt the the ice further by the heat of the um, building. So. 
yeah, maybe we have to, to change our stuff building then a little bit because that's not uh, raised uh, into the sky. But we could do this. Like uh, there is a there's a good chance of, of having um, the opportunity to raise that one. So at the moment we don't have it raised, but um, it might make sense uh, to go back and do it because now as we know the reason for it, that makes total sense, right? So in total, I want to say... Um, this is, uh, this is really exactly the core of what I want on my YouTube channel. These comments are what I'm doing that for, you know, learning about the facts, learning about science, learning about why I'm doing that stuff and, you know, getting this realism in um, also supported by actual facts. That's super cool. I really do like that a lot. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this and I really hope that you guys do enjoy it as well. I am... Yeah, I'm just a, I'm just I'm just very happy to to have this interaction with you guys, and I really hope that you guys uh, will be as active in in this comment section again about the doll sheep or whatever. I don't really have a question of the day, um, um since I'm you know uh, tomorrow is Christmas, so yeah, well maybe question of the day: What are you still doing today um, before Christmas is actually hitting you hard, um, and you have to you know you have to uh, it sounds dramatic, but you you have um, all the time with your family and potentially not as much on your computer as you as you're normally hour or in the social medias which is a good thing a few days without and just spending time with the family is very important so uh, i really do hope that you guys have this um time for you uh, to do it so really really hope you're enjoying it but yeah that would be a great question what are you still doing today in terms of preparation for the christmas days uh, that would be great to know. Anyways, we are continuing here um, again, uh, knowing the fact with this little, uh, you know, uh, secret I was told by Laurie is basically I um, I took the generator and also raised this generator a little bit up um, so that it is not really tucked to the ground. I also set that on poles. And what I also tried to do with these poles are the the structure, the, the foundation structure, to create some stuff that has some movement in it, so that they they could also like for any movement they. Um, they can handle it because of the the metal plate in there for providing some space and yeah that was the main idea about the fooders of these things and i thought okay you know what um, we need this thing as energy you know and i was getting in with these uh, wonderful uh, poles one, one thing I, I really don't like this is one of the things i really don't get like we have these energy poles the, the, the kind of indian energy poles i guess these are but we don't have any cables in the game. We don't have any kind of cables. So I was really looking at, at which kind of piece I can use. And um, I ended up with these Indian row. Uh, no, I, I think I ended up with a little fence piece. I, I really wasn't sure what to use. Yeah, there we go. This is the little fence piece I used at the end um, to just make sure it looks somewhat like a cable. But I don't know. It's it's not super believable, but it's, it's enough to, to at least have something. And yeah, I was just trying to make this uh, work as, as best as possible um, and kind of create this fencing over here. I really enjoyed uh, having this little bit of realism again in to make sure and also I think uh, it makes sense to have it overground so <laughs> you wouldn't potentially build that underground here how would you with all the ice and stuff so um, oh maybe maybe I should say again um, because talking of ice and snow and all the cold and at the moment it's all green and you know the thing is I uh, intentionally um, get rid of the snow at the beginning of each every episode because it's so much easier to build and to understand where stuff is when you don't have the white snow because you cannot really tell the difference of layers and stuff so that's why I'm always using the normal uh, kind of uh, greenish ground and whenever the episode is done I'm changing to snow so you will see at the end of this episode I'm also already activating snow again to see how it looks in snow and uh, yeah well all these kind of stuff yeah then I just went in and, and made a little transformator building here where or transformer where the energy is then kind of uh, brought to yeah just using these air conditioned units because I felt like they have the best appeal to it that kind of makes sense and that was about it I just didn't want to do any anything more yeah just just kind of creating these poles and then uh, now we are just doing some more detailing about the building I wanted to make um, something very much in particular over here that I I plan to do for a while I wanted to get in with some more color um, that is somewhat uh, inspired by our main building and uh, I didn't want to make it too much but I felt like okay we need some security for the winds and for the storms when people are walking over here so I made uh, these kind of um, corrugated metal uh, covers if you will so I put them in here as you can see 
um, somewhat as a little boundary. Um, it, it's more like a bigger fence that kind of provides you from not having all the wind chills going on. And uh, I just made sure that this is kind of where you go down. It's a bit easier. But yeah, that, that's basically about this building. Uh, just a little bit of detailing here and there. Nothing major. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible because uh, it's all functional here. It's, it's not meant to be super creative or super... Um, in detail uh, the buildings should just look as you know as if they belong there and that's about it there's nothing too special about it we have the heli landing pad landing pad we have the research station and we will get with, in with a lot more research buildings around so this will be done um, the snow leopard uh, habitat is potentially also going to be an entire research habitat so this might be one of the only habitats that are not natural in a way if you will so that might be just a research kind of habitat um i have an idea already how to do it um but we have to see how this turns out to be working uh, but yeah so that's that's kind of it um, i'm just making sure that everything fits together in the way i wanted it to fit together and yeah now it's all about putting in the last uh, fences and the last detailings to make sure that the dull sheep habitat looks um less habitat ish if you will and more natural so i just using this fence over here which is more likely uh, to be like a farm fence uh, which it is like it is a little a sheep farm over here and and then this building next to it was just meant to be a little farm itself uh, what i haven't done yet is a shelter i have to still do a shelter for them uh, that makes sense in this area but uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of how it turned out in the end looking because it, it makes sense it's believable it's not overly overdone and um, it, it's similar to the reindeer habitat so also it kind of makes up for a little bit of a excitement here yeah not, nothing nothing too crazy it's it's just very simple uh not not talking of uh of a crazy habitat in terms of uh, looks and feels but yeah i'm just using also the chain link fence here to make a bit of an easy work for me and don't put the same fence all over the place because that, that would have been uh, very boring indeed and yeah then again always using rocks and stuff uh, to create um, some natural borders also make sure that they cannot walk on top of that I needed to spot in uh, some of the other uh, rocks here and there to make sure that the animals cannot escape even though I had some issues with escaping because I was too dumb to recognize where I have some open spaces getting in with some ice which is already a hint to something I'm doing in the next episode potentially and uh, which goes together with the polar bear or the arctic wolf not even sure yet but you can see there's a whole bunch of escape potential here which I needed to address which I always do with rocks it's it's kind of though easy because these rocks have such a great hitbox um it always makes sense to use them uh as somewhat of a of a little uh, help and yeah I, I was putting some uh fences in here again to make sure that they cannot escape over here and then i figured okay this fence needs to be a bit uh, lower and i just raised them all while i was doing so i created a gap below them and that was also not too clever and so yeah in the end i needed to change all of these things by yeah pulling down as you can see these ropes a bit more so that the sheeps cannot escape it was a bit of a tedious work now sped up it doesn't look that uh nasty but let me tell you it was um <laughs> so um also needed to get in with some more of these uh, little bits and pieces here and then i figured okay let's also change this a bit and then you can see finally i made it uh some of the sheeps were already um kind of escape but that's about it now we let's let it snow and uh this is the end of today's episode i really hope you enjoyed this episode again question of the day what is your uh, what do you do today what's the last bit you do before the christmas days really begin and i really wish all of you a happy merry christmas and hope to see you in the next one until then have a great time guys and bye Alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video, I really do appreciate that. As always, uh, make sure to check out also my social media channels, you can find me everywhere under at RudyRandCamel. Also, big thanks to the crew, uh, you can see it on the left hand side right now. And as always, if you want to see more, you click that card on the top right. And if you want to stick around because you like the stuff you've just saw, you just saw, whatever, you know what I mean, just uh, click that sub button which is to the bottom right of the screen right now. But everything else I can say is have a great time and see you next time. Bye guys.